Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Cars. Today we're going to be going through a tutorial on how to carve one of these little gnome women, three inches tall. Should be a fun project to work on. And I want to make sure and let you know this is a knife only project. So we've got our block of wood. I've got my utility knife here. I've also got my homemade knife. Uh, this used to be a straight razor once upon a time. And you don't need really uh, any other carving tools for this, as far as like a V-tool, gouge, or anything. And I'll tell you something about this project that I think will be a benefit is how to carve hair braids. I really struggled for the longest time on how to carve hair braids and even how to draw hair braids. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Uh, it looked terrible. And then I found a method um, that makes it pretty simple. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be able to share that with you. So I want to also say thank you to everyone um, for your support. We've surpassed 5,000 subscribers now and had a big 5K giveaway. Uh, sent a free carving to Brandon in Iowa. Congratulations, Brandon, for winning that giveaway. And if you would like to win a free carving, it's very simple. All you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this video before July 31st of 2023. And you will be in the running because I'll pick a random person from the comment section to win a free carving and uh, send that out to you. All right, so today we're working with a block that is three inches. And of course, I've got a handle on it, um, but the, the block we're carving is three inches tall and one and a half inches square. And for our metric friends is 76 mils tall and 38 mils square. All right, so what I recommend to get started is that you put an X on the top of your carving from corner to corner, or your block of wood, I should say, so we can mark the center of the block. Uh, and you can see I've got F for front and this is my back. Also recommend you put a center line along each side of your block of wood. And that will be very helpful as we go through our process here today. So first thing we're going to do is mark off where we're going to put the nose. So I've got my front here and I'll grab my pencil and my ruler. So all we're going to do now is measure up from the bottom of our block one and a half inches. All right. That's 38 mils. And then we'll mark on the center line. So there's one and a half. So we make that mark on the center line. That's going to be where the top of the nose meets the hat brim. All right, so next we're going to make some markings where we will place the brim of that hat on the side and front, okay? And for this, we're going to measure up one and three eighths, that would be 35 mils for the conversion. And we'll make our mark. So here's one and one, two, three eighths right here. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Right here at one and three eighths, again, 35 mils. All right, so what does that do? I mentioned that this is where the top of the nose meets the brim of the hat. These marks will represent the slope on that hat, okay? So all we want to do is draw a line, sort of connecting and sloping that brim, just like this. All right? And there we go. Now we've got, on the front anyway, uh, our mark for the brim. Now we'll measure the back of the hat and put in some marks on the back of our block. So turn it over to the back of your block. What we'll do is measure up from the bottom, one inch, that's 25 mils. And we'll just make a mark for that one inch line. Now, all we're really going to do here is 
make a line straight across at that one inch mark. You can make this as precise as you want and I'm gonna keep it simple and crooked, but you get the idea. Make a line at one inch. And carry that over onto the side a little bit, just like this, because the next thing we'll do is draw the slope of the brim along the side of the hat. So we've got our mark on the front, we'll carry that over. Now we're just gonna connect that front to the back, just like that. Pretty simple. There we go. Next thing we'll do is mark the top of the hat. Now, one of the things that we wanna make sure we account for is which way we want the hat to flop over, right? Now, you can see in this example, I've got the hat flopping over to this side. What you may not also notice is this hat slopes backwards like this quite a bit, especially when you compare it to this side. Um, it's more prevalent, more, it's easier to see with this hat for sure, right? See that angle compared to the angle coming off the back? And how do we do that? Pretty Find your front. Here's my front. Here's the center of our block. All we're going to do is come past center towards the back over here. I'm just going to make an oval shape. And since I want this hat to flop over to this side, I'm going to make it that oval heavy to this side. If you want the hat to flop over this way, just plan accordingly and make your oval heavier to that side. I'm, I'm going this way. That's basically going to show me where the top of the hat will live. And there you go. So next thing we'll do is just draw in our nose right here on the front where we have that center line. We're just gonna kind of make a quarter inch square. That'd be six mils. And do make it larger than what you think you need for the nose. And hey, we're ready to start carving. So the first thing we'll do is rough out this hat. I like to start by removing all these sharp corners off of the block um, for a couple of reasons. We don't need them and that wants to go the other way. We don't need the corners and uh, it'll be more comfortable for us to hold when we're carving. Okay. So, what we'll do is start removing this material. And if you wanna make another reference line, let me just show you one really quick that may be helpful for you, especially if you're a beginner. So we know that we made our, our oval here on the top. And we're going to bring that hat back quite a bit. So if you want to, you can just make a quick and simple reference line. If you go from that center line here you can go ahead and come down to your base of your hat, which we had here, right? And you can just put in a line. It could be helpful for you because what we're basically saying is all this material is gonna go away, okay? Just wanna show that to you real quick. All right, back to the, the roughing out process. We will uh, take our basswood back a little bit here. I have to say this is a little tough piece of basswood, uh, tougher than normal, but we'll work with it and make do. You can see some progress there. Just every once in a while, you know, you can just check and see how you're doing with your progress. 
that line we put on the side over there. Remember that? Yeah. And uh, while I'm at it here, while I have a minute, we're just roughing this out. I want to say that uh, the response to our YouTube channel has been tremendous. And, and I really do appreciate um, all the support from everyone. It's uh, so nice to hear from people all over the world. You know, I've sent carvings, uh, free carvings, to people in various states here, um, to the UK, and to Canada. Yeah. I think my carvings get around more than I do. So we're making some pretty good progress there. I'm going to start pushing in from the back some. And from the sides, you know, start removing these bandsaw marks. And what we want to be doing is rounding as well, okay? So think about rounding your piece. And it took a big bite that time. Wants to go the other directions, getting ready to split. Yeah, see that big old chunk. <laughs> uh, I should be more patient with it, and uh, not try and bust it loose. All right, we'll we'll go the other way. So, if you have a situation where you're carving along, and then your knife tends to grab. You'll feel it. Um, the knife wants to just take the blade and dig way down deep into the, the wood grain. That's, that's your clue. You need to carve in the other direction. And sometimes I listen to the clue. Sometimes I just take my chances. All right, we're getting there. And if you get a spot where your grain is twisted or something, you know, you, you have an issue no matter whether you're carving up this way or down this way, sometimes you carve across the grain, it'll help you some. You see, I have a little bit of compound coming off my knife here from stropping. Okay. We'll hit the back side real quick. Again, rounding and removing bandsaw marks. It's the name of the game here. As well as, you know, just roughing in the shape that we want. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do next. Start pushing this angle over to this side over here because this is where I want that hat to flop over. All right, so I'm going to start moving that material in that direction. when you get to the end grain the chips are going to come off relatively smaller size right 
it's just the nature of end grain and carving end grain. got some little bandsaw marks to remove here and we'll be in good shape yeah okay so there we go you can see what that profile looks like right there so all I'm gonna do now is kind of start cutting a notch over on this side And this will help to enhance that floppy part of the hat. All right now it kind of bends over. I'm going to just take this line and I curl it up a little bit just like that. Take a little off the top. All right, so we've got a little flop starting to happen there. Nice. All right, so what we'll do next is make some uh, make some cuts to ensure that we have some material for the brim of our hat. Right. So all I'm going to do come along these lines that we have here for the brim and make a stop cut. And then we'll start roughing out the body. And you can see that hat is not completely shaped yet. That's okay. It's just the start, right? We're just roughing it out. So with our body, we're going to remove quite a bit of material down here including the center line. So do make sure you've got that center line carried over on onto your hat. So you will still have a reference point there even after we rough out the body. All right. First thing we'll do to get started on the body is bring out that nose. I'm just going to make a little triangle cut right next to that nose on each side to start getting some depth and at the same time making that stop cut for the brim that we talked about a second ago right there okay all right carve up into that corner pop that out easy peasy all right let's do one over here same thing just a little triangle cut Get the tip of that knife in there, that blade. And we're going to put in our stop cut for the brim at the same time. And now we have to carve upside down. At least left-handed people are upside down on this left side of the nose. All right. There you go. So let's put in the rest of our stop cuts for the brim. This is just so, you know, when we're roughing out the body, we don't remove too much material along the way. Now, it's a relatively small carving, you know, three inches tall. So, roughing out the body shouldn't take too long. We're 
got one more stop cut to go here on this side. So we'll just get on that corner and follow that line up to it. There we go. All right, so we want to make sure we put a stop cut all the way around that nose. We have the sides pretty well handled. Let's make a stop cut along the base. And as we are roughing out the body, that will bring out that nose. Now, one of the things I want to make sure we cover is that these little gnome ladies have um, so more material at the base than they do at the top, right? So we're going to be scooping, kind of curling that blade up from the base to get that effect, right? And I think before I start, I'll just make sure and reinforce that stop cut. And the object, of course, is to help bring out that nose and start just getting that shape that we want for the body. So I'm curling that, curling that blade. And of course, we're removing bandsaw marks here too. And rounding, right? We wanna make sure to focus on the rounding of our piece. Bring out that nose, right? Get these corners some more. Curl that knife. And, of course, get rid of all of our flat surface here and all the bandsaw marks that come with it. As I mentioned, this is a, not a very soft piece of basswood. I think I'm spoiled, to tell you the truth. Got a challenge with the grain over here. This wants to come down this way. All right, just gonna move over onto the side a little bit and continue with roughing this thing. And as I mentioned, this grain wants to travel the other direction here. Now, ideally, what we would look for here is at least one eighth of an inch depth here on this hat brim for the side, right? That's three millimeters. You can go more if you want. The 
got this grain here. It is a challenge. So, what we'll do before I get too far into the removal of that wood on the back side there, I want to measure in from that back side about a half inch, right? about 13 mils, just make a mark and then carry that down to the base, all right? So right about here. Yeah, this is the material that will take out. And what does that do for us? Well, it, it gives us this effect here where the base kind of comes up underneath that brim and close to where the hair is, okay? All right, so on the back side, pushing that corner in to round it. Make some separation underneath that brim. And of course, removing these bandsaw marks too. I have to say, there's something about this knife that works so well. <laughs> um, the straight razor I used when I made this knife, well, it's probably at least 80 years old, maybe older. Could have been a hundred, I, I don't really know for sure. Um, but it was messed up, right? It was not gonna be used as a straight razor any longer. It needed a new life and I gave it a whittling knife life. <laughs> and uh, the steel is uh, excellent. Like I said, holds an edge really well. Not easy to sharpen it though, it really was a challenge to first profile the blade and shape it and sharpen it because of the hardness of the steel. All right, so it's going to carry on now over onto the sides. Again, looking to get at least eighth of an inch, three mil separation on the sides, okay? You'll have more on the front and the back when it comes to the brim. But whatever you choose, as far as this separation, this depth, you know, you just want to be consistent on both sides. Starting to get that nice separation we were looking for with that nose, bringing that out. Just doing a little cleanup work right now. Okay, well. Just kind of eyeball your piece and uh, 
Think about symmetry, okay? Check your depth on the sides and see if it's the same. I've got more depth on this, uh, this right side of this gnome uh, than I do over here on the left side. So I'm gonna take some more material here. I also recommend just looking at your carving from all different angles, even upside down from time to time. You'll see some things that you might not have caught just looking at it uh, in a normal fashion. So what I like to do in, uh, in that way is take my carving. Sometimes I'll hold it like this to see if I've got some symmetry going there. And like I said, even upside down sometimes. All right. So we have roughed out the hat, roughed out the body, and um, kind of roughed out the nose as well along the way. Now, what's left to do? Well, we're going to put in details and Let's just grab one of our examples here real quick. This is the first gnome lady that I carved. So, the remainder of the details, of course, we, we will need to put in our face here. You can see I've added a kind of a neckline for this gnome lady's sort of dress that she's wearing. The hair and braids, little hair ties. And of course, putting the finishing touches on the shape of that hat. And, uh, and this uh, little gnome woman will be all set, right? So I wanna remind everyone, please, if you're interested in a free carving, go ahead and leave a comment in the comments section below before July 31st, 2023. And while you're at it, if you could, please hit that like button, uh, really appreciate it. When we get together in our next session, we'll do the details and we'll have some fun uh, doing that as well. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.